if someone were to ask you, let's say that no one had ever heard of you before, and someone were to ask you, what what is your passion? What were you put here on this earth for? What would your answer to them be? Uh, share my story. So being born with my disability, I never kind of understood. Why. And the first time I went to go speak in a crowd and people were like, you're inspiring, your story is really dope. That kind of let me know what I was put on earth. Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Welcome to another episode of Mosaic Minds Podcast. My name is Nick, and to my right here is Jason. Today, we uh, we have a truly inspiring guest with us, Eric Jones Jr. Eric is a dynamic, certified professional speaker, a social and emotional learning expert, teacher, mentor, and basketball coach. With over eight years of experience in speaking and coaching, he's known for his powerful ability to inspire and activate students and educators across America. Eric's journey is nothing short of remarkable. He has overcome significant challenges, including physical disabilities, bullying, and academic hurdles to become a leading voice in personal growth and education. Welcome to the show, Eric. Uh, Appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, glad to have you here, Eric. Uh, Just talk to the people that are hearing you for the first time a little bit about your your platform and how you kind of work and mentor. And, and just also your background and, you know, your history, kind of what brought you to where you're at now. So I was born uh, with a physical disability that made my arms short. So growing up, like I would get bullied, all those different things, didn't like school. But what kind of helped me was basketball, being able to play basketball, being able to be good enough to get on the court. People looked at me totally different after that. So that was the first like stepping stone of me being who I am today. Fast forward to today, just understanding the game of basketball and realizing that I'm not going to make it to the NBA. I like coaching kids. I like kids. So that kind of gave me the ability to speak. And with speaking, that gave me the opportunity to create a podcast. And on my podcast, I interview other underdogs because I feel like everybody at some point in their life is an underdog. And just to be able to come on, share their story and be able to help other people become a top dog. Because I feel like everyone has that dog in them, but they don't know how to turn it on or or keep it going. And that's what my podcast is about. And just being able to share my story and being vulnerable and telling people how I overcame the different struggles of just being me. And that's kind of the platform that I have. I'm very authentic and transparent. I really don't I mean there's some things, you know, I don't talk about. But for the majority, I'm open book because I feel like when someone hears somebody else's story and they hear it from a genuine place, that'll help them rather than someone say, well, I was down and out. Now I, you know, woke up one morning and now I'm doing better and I'm doing this. That doesn't really help you. But when you're being authentic and sharing your story, somebody can resonate with that story rather than just giving I think my underdog story comes from being small farming community, to be honest with you. Not very many kids in my class, not many opportunities, not many open gyms and stuff. So I can I can appreciate that, man, like almost having to prove yourself just by walking in the gym, if you will. So I can uh, tip my cap for that. So when you when you uh, coach and you mentor, what age group or, or what what section of the city, if you will, is kind of your, um, your your niche or, or or who you work with day in and day out? Um, so I've coached all over just cause my daughter, when she was, I think about fifth or sixth grade, she decided she wanted to play and that didn't last long. So I was coaching boys mainly on the West side. Cause that's where I live until I joined with yep. the other coach that coaches me with my son's team and my son's in fifth grade. So we got, we coached the fourth and fifth graders. But mentoring, I would say all age groups because I worked in middle school. I worked in middle school now. I worked in elementary. So I would say the age that I really like to mentor is like 
that fourth, fifth grade to middle school because you can catch them before, you know, they start smelling themselves, before they start hanging out with the wrong people, making the wrong choices. So yeah. um, I'm on all sides of the town, really. I'm not really in one area. Been I live on the south side now, so I got, you know, kids up here that work at my old school that I still coach. So really, I never thought I would coach younger kids like my son's age, but being his coach as his dad, it's really dope, but then it was hard at first, too. So it's been a struggle being able to be a coach, and coach my son, and then coach other kids as well. Because my son, you know, sometimes like, hey, dad, uh, you treat me. I'm like, no, I treat you like everybody else. So, yeah, that's where I coach, and that's who I coach. Uh, I mentor any and everybody, but kind of that younger age, to kind of catch them before they they get too far in peer pressure. What kind of advice would you give somebody that's facing uh, some adversities or, you know, um, some kind of uh, insurmountable obstacle, you know, like something that something kind of like you said that you dealt with growing up, you know, with being bullied and all that. How, what kind of advice do you give? Because I'm sure you run into kids that you mentor like that. And what kind of advice do you give them and, and maybe even share like a, a success story that came out of it? Control what you can control in those situations, because I couldn't control that I was born this way, but I could control the outcome of how my life would be. Because there's definitely where other kids yeah. that I saw in the hospital that looked like me or was worse. And they did, they weren't able to do different things. So I always tell kids to control what you can control. So I would say, um, a success story would be, I used to go and go to the detention center and I love going there because I could be the real raw me. I could talk how I really wanted to talk. I could be transparent with the yeah. kids. And one day kid comes up to me and I don't remember all kids. You know, I talked to different kids and he's like, Hey, you remember me? I'm like, no. Matter of fact, I was walking from the gas station. You no, know, I was walking from the barbershop to where I used to live. So I'm walking and kids in the car at the liquor store. They're like, hey, what's up? I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I got the car door open. I'm like, uh, what they going on? And I got a little rock on my cheek. So I, you know, I'm like, just in case, I don't know what they on. He's like, hey, man, you don't remember me? I'm like, no. He was like, yeah, you came to the detention center <laughs> and listening to you, I was able to do it. I was like, man, that's really dope. And just hearing kids oh, that's awesome. come up to me and say they're doing good or they remember the talk that I gave them, but those are always success stories because, like I said, I work in schools, I deal with kids, so sometimes I don't remember them, and them just coming up to me and, you know, having a smile on their face when they see me is something good, but you can control what, you, you know, you can control what you can control, and if you take over that part, then everything yeah. else will come. Like, I can control that I could go play basketball, that I could dribble the ball, I can shoot the ball really good. It don't look like everybody else's shot, but it goes in. So just being able to control those things and being actually to show kids, like kids actually seeing me play basketball and doing different stuff, they're like, oh, he really can do what he says he can. So there's no excuse for me not to be able to do, you know, vice versa. Who's maybe an influence in the basketball court, maybe in the NBA that ever, you know, what what's a name or two that you kind of say, hey, I like that guy's game or I think that guy's a good role model for everybody? Uh, right now, I would say uh, Steph Curry. Um, I'm a little guy, so Allen Iverson was is my goat. Like that was the guy I looked up to. So I would say no, because he's he's a role model off the court too, and he's more likable to be your size. Like you got LeBron, he's great too, but he's yeah. everybody's not six eight, two fit. You might be closer to six four, yeah, yeah exactly. Pounds, like Steph. So I would say Steph. I like Anthony Edwards just because he's himself. I think a lot of times when you get into business and politics and all those things, they want you to be a certain way. And it's like, oh, let me be me because you're you're more marketable when you're yourself. So I would say those two guys are two guys that I like for kids um, that that come to mind. I like Draymond. Everybody might not like Draymond, but you need a Draymond on your team. You might not like that person. Or if you're on the opposite you side, you're going to be like, yep. I hate this dude, but if you got him on your team, you know, you rocking and rolling. So that's the kind of, I would say Draymond just as a, to show kids, you don't have to be the scorer. You don't have to, you can do the little things and still make it to the league. So those three people. You often speak about uh, how to have a heart. Could you break down that acronym for us and uh, for the listeners and how how that can ap apply to, to people's everyday lives? Yeah, how, uh, heroic effort and uh, I can't think of what, what the other ones are. I'm sorry, I can't think of what uh, 
because I haven't used it in a while. That, no, that's okay. But art is really okay. what I, that's me. If you see me on the basketball court, I got a little talent, but I got heart. Like, I got the biggest heart. You put me in the jungle, I yeah. don't know how to get out, but I'm going to figure a way out. And you're going to have to kill me to to defeat me. And that's how I kind of look at it. I always tell kids, like, you, especially my son, he's my height. You know, he's small, skinny. Like, everybody don't got heart. Everybody don't got that effort that you can go out there and beat somebody just off of pure effort, just diving at the ball, playing defense, you know, doing the little things in the court or in your life. So art has just always been me. Like, if you ever see me, if you ever see me out, like, you're like, how, does he, how is he able to throw a football? How is he able to drive? What? what? And it's all off heart. I'm not strong. I don't got no muscles, none of that. It's just pure heart. I don't care if you step on the court with me and you 6'1 and you feel like you're 250. Come on, come on down here and try to punch me up and see if it works. Like, I just have the fear that I'm not scared of anything or anybody. And when you have that in you, like, you can go and accomplish anything you want. Like, when you got heart and you just show up, you, speak day, up. you can, you can, you can defeat anybody and anything that's in front of you. And that's just me. That's just how I've lived. That's how I realized how I've made it. It's just by having heart. Without heart, you might be able to defeat me, but I don't think it's nobody that's just going to defeat me. I have the confidence that I don't care if LeBron, Michael Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, whoever's on the court, I'm going to beat them. And that's just having the confidence in yourself. And when you have that confidence in yourself, you're able to do anything that you want. I, I think I, I think you're speaking my language, man. When I played three on three, you know, I'm diving, I'm diving head first on concrete. I'm picking rocks out of my knees and I'm bleeding. I mean, that's just to share with you, you know, you're a warrior. You're definitely a warrior. I'm a warrior. I don't care if you're 6'8", 270 and can run through a brick wall. I'm going to challenge you and you're going to know I'm on the court. I'm not claiming to be any good, but I'm claiming that you know I'm going to be there. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast. It's 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 a nice situation that we're talking with you today. Talk to me a little bit about maybe aspect of your podcast that you're proud of up to this point and And tell us a little bit about it maybe by name as well. It's called Underdog Talk. One thing that I'm proud of is I've learned to learn from other people. Just from having the different stories on and understanding that I can have a conversation with anybody and not know them. And they feel comfortable enough to open up and answer questions. And I always have questions. You know, I have like seven questions. I sometimes only get past one because I'm able to hold the conversation. And I'm I'm proud of that. Because exactly. everybody can't do that. The podcast is actually, I want it to be a, eventually a talk show. And that's kind of just a dream of it. But to be able to hear people's story. A lot of times we see people on social media, we see them out and you're like, man, they're this cool person. They got this money. And sometimes you'll think they're an asshole because they might not shake your hand. They might not talk to you because they're busy. But then to actually sit down and talk to them and be like, man, this person, oh, this person is actually relatable. And then they hear their story and be able to translate it to the audience to be able to help them in their daily life is really the key of it. And I also like learning the behind the scenes because I do everything. Uh, I kind of have a team. I kind of don't, but I've, I've done everything. I went from audio on my phone to laptop to being in the studio. So just being able to learn every day about actual production. And not just sitting in front of the camera, because that's what I want to do. I just want to sit down, talk to the to my guests, and leave. But since I'm not able to, I'm learning all the different things that can be able to help me down the road, or eventually when I have a team, so I can know what the team is supposed to be doing. Yeah, that's part of the fun is the evolution that comes behind that. You know, like from you go, like you know, if we go back and look at some of our beginning episodes compared to you know some of our more recent ones, you know, it's it's amazing the difference that you see, you know, you, you don't even realize you're growing so slow that you don't even necessarily realize that you're growing or how fast you're growing until you, until you look at the before and after. And, you know, you said something that I completely agree with. You're talking about just getting to know people. And that's what something that you, uh, one of your favorite aspects about the podcast. And I'd have to say, and I can't speak for Jason, but I'd say probably that's one of his also, but that's definitely one of my favorite aspects is we've gotten the chance to talk to so many people that we would have never probably even come in contact with. And then others that had we have come in contact with them, we may have, you know, kind of given a head nod, but we, like you said, we wouldn't have sat down with them and actually heard their stories. So 
you know, it, it's it, it. This was supposed when we started. It was supposed to just be for fun. For me, it's still that is still kind of what it is. You know, we're not necessarily looking to uh, turn it into a huge empire, but the the networking and then and the personalities that we've met since we started this has been just phenomenal, unbelievable. That uh, something that I would have never dreamed, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. In the basketball world, you know, when you got two Hall of Famers, top fifty of all time. I mean, I won't name drop, but you know what I mean? Name drop. When they were in, when, when they're in circles, you know, we've got a uh, artist Gilmore coming up. Rick Barry's been on Bob Nedelik. He kind of ran the city of Indianapolis in the late sixties and seventies for the Pacers. So it's great to see. So I like to try to find out who I'm talking with and we have more similarities in what you think, you know, uh, Nick off camera, but we, uh, we both went to VU, right? Okay. We just missed each other by about a year. The question that I have that I think I might be right and correct me if I'm wrong. You strike me as the type of guy that wakes up in the morning and you have instant energy. Am I wrong by that or am I right by that? It depends on the day, but yeah, I'm mostly, once once I get up and <laughs> get to going, I'm going and yeah, because I can come into work at school, it's 7.30, I'm hyped. And they're like, why are you so hyped? It's like, I don't know, it's just, that's just me. I got that energy, that, uh, that hype energy. I like to have fun, but be serious. So I'm always trying to make people laugh and stuff of that sort. So yeah, that's you you're about right. It just depends on the day though. What amazes me about these podcasts is when you're talking to people you have more you have can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear Eric, you. Eric, we can edit this out, but can you hear me? Yeah, yep, now, now we can hear you clear. Okay, so we're good. So let me let me kind of re reframe that and we'll just kind of edit strike that out. But um talk to me a little bit about uh when you're mentoring or you're talking with someone I know you said when you run into somebody out in the community and you've made an impact, they graduated. Tell me about, tell me about like maybe working in an area that's just a real pleasure, like a specific facility, maybe, or like a specific uh, group of people. What does that look like for you in the, in the impact that you're making there? It, it really just depends. Cause I think working in the schools, me just being me, I'm mentoring kids or, you know, being a influencer to them just because that's just the nature of who I am. But I would say basketball, just coaching, because you get to see not the star players. It's not the kids that I already know. It's the kids that kind of don't know, but want to work and they listen to you. And then as the season progresses, you see them actually getting better or you see them as court. You know, their parents like, hey, their grades are better or whatever the case may be. So I would say coaching. And just because most of these kids are kind of like sons or nephews to me now because I've been around for some years and they play football. My son doesn't, but we still go to the game. We still cheering them on and just seeing. I would say so this summer, my son, I signed him up for author program, helped him write a book, but helping the kids that play basketball with us, but do football, help them writing a book and just hearing their stories and actually getting to know the kids that was that was really dope to me so i would say just the coaching part because we have a core of kids and you can we're growing up with them and we're getting to see them become young men and just on the court or on the field but off the court just seeing how they are and just remembering how it was as a kid like you where i'm from michigan city indiana we didn't have that where we went and won the state championship we didn't have that opportunity in fourth grade to go and do something. Or we could have went to a national championship, but that cost a lot of money. Just doing those different things and getting them out of Indianapolis, and seeing different stuff. So I would say that. And like every team I have, I always take them to a Pacers game just so they can see what a real team looks like. So just doing different stuff yep. with, with young men. Yep. Yep. They don't have fathers or their moms always at work. So being another positive figure in their life. Man, big handshake there, you know, dap, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it, it's, it's just great to hear that because there's not enough people out in the community that are sacrificing maybe a little bit of themselves for the betterment of the community. So I think that's a great, keep doing what you're doing, man. That's a, that's a, that's a fist bump, whatever you want to call it, man, because there's, there's extreme value in that eighth grader that you're molding. And then he looks back on you and says, Hey man, you know, thanks to you, I was successful. Thanks to you, I stayed out of trouble. You can't put a dollar figure on that. You can't put a tap on the back. And, and it is a funny story that these kids are now grown, you know, if you will, or bigger. But at the same time, they're thankful for you. They're not trying to rough you up or anything. So I think that's great. When you're on the podcast, uh, when you're on the podcast, man, uh, what I've found to be true is 
is the more you talk with someone, the more similarities they are. I mean, we both went to VU. We both like podcasting. We both can talk basketball. But talk to me about how you uncover stuff about your guest and how that translates maybe into your life and what do you take away from maybe that interaction? It depends on if the guests give me enough information or I can go look up the information on that person to kind of get to know them, maybe see what their favorite sports team, something they like or whatever. So I do do my research as much as I can on a guest to kind of throw in stuff or maybe talk about something that somebody don't normally ask. But it's it's super dope to find out there's people because I'm kind of, you know, still nine to five entrepreneur. But there's people out there that go through what you went through and you're able to sit down and ask them questions. And I realized, like, as I've been doing more and more, ask the questions that you want to ask, because there's going to be people like you that want those answers. So just being comfortable enough to ask mm -hmm. questions and figuring out what, what to keep, like how to keep the conversation going. Cause sometimes we go down a rabbit hole. It's way off topic, but that's because me and the guest have, you know, <laughs> took a, into a certain thing or like if me and you would have been talking, we both went to BU, we could have talked about our experiences or anything of that sort. So it's just really finding out that they're everybody similar in a certain way and everyone's human. Sometimes people get on there and they like to talk and they, you know, we've been talking for some hours. We're supposed to be there for an hour, and we, we're in two hours now. So it's just dope <laughs> to, to see that and then to build the, like, the connections or the relationships. That's the, that's the dope part about it, just meeting new people and realizing there's a lot of similarities in other people that are doing the things you want to do. Eric, what kind of guests do you have on your podcast? Like, Give, me an exam give us an example of, uh, of somebody that, that you've had on. That doesn't have to be anybody famous necessarily, but just just the type of conversations, the type of guests that you that you like to have on your show. Um, I've had all kinds of people. So I've had lawyers, educators, entertainers, activists, people that just have a story, pastors. I feel like I, now more so I research and see who's doing stuff, who's because everybody has a story, but something that they can actually um, come on and tell somebody. Everybody be like, oh, you got a podcast I want to get on. What you going to talk about? Like, what are you going to come here and talk right. about? Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. like, you know, friends would be like, let me get on there. You're not talking about nothing. So it's really somebody I researched <laughs> and they've done the podcast because I've had people on their episode ain't make it because they don't have conversation. So just anybody and everybody to a certain degree, but you got to be able to have a conversation. And be able to when you're prepared for a show do you like when you're preparing for a show do you like start how do you how do you format it in your head like do you start with the title okay so this is going to be the top i know you said sometimes it goes off on tangents but do you, uh, you start with the title and kind of be like okay so this is the topic this is what we're going to talk about and kind of just like gear it towards that or do you just free flow the whole thing I don't, I pick a title once i'm done because uh, you never know what we're going to talk about so i do like Never know. What I do have a point. topic or a certain aspect that I want to talk about. So I start off with, I always ask everybody for a fun, um, just to kind of open it up so they could talk about something maybe people don't know. And then I kind of have them tell their story, walk us down from point A to point B. It might be their whole story, it might be where they started before they are where they at. And then we kind of get into what they do and have, like I said, I have a set of questions that I want to dive into because everybody's going to have different answers. But just depending on the conversation, like you said earlier, you have a lot of similarities. So it's like sometimes my reply might be like, yeah, I've done that or I had that situation. And then we kind of go back and forth. We really try to stay on mm -hmm. topic because I want people to learn because each topic might be different. It might be a health person. It might be a entrepreneur, whatever the case. They're, they're there to help somebody move the needle. So it's to get to know their story first, but then go into what they actually are doing and how they got. Through. So if you had to give like a description of, cause I'm sure if I went on to your, uh, your podcast page on Spotify or wherever, I'm sure there's a description. So like, how would you describe your podcast? What would your description be of, of the type of, of podcast that you are? A self help, a self help conversation because it's helping okay. the nice. particular tips and then just having a conversation. I don't really say interview because I feel like it's a conversation more so than an interview. Because yeah. the interview you go through conversation, the yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
just a conversation. I think you have a lot of the elements that we have, you know, uh, just from our interaction, it's kind of like, you know, the mosaic is kind of like take the conversation wherever it is. I like the far, I like the fact that you're pivoting, you're taking it different directions. You're able to, you know, let, let the conversation dictate itself as opposed to being extremely organized and extremely regimented. I think, I think you get more out of an open conversation of that. Do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cause I've never been that type of person to structure, even when I go speak at schools, like I have an idea of what I want to talk about. But I remember I tried to do a verbatim of a speech. I did it horrible and lost the competition. And I was so mad. And I was like, just be yourself. And it's just learning how to ask better questions, how to come up with better replies or what your goal is for each conversation. If you know that, then you kind of know how to keep the conversation flowing in a way that you can still have a general conversation but also learn from a person i think i think humor comes into the game you know when we're talking mosaic you don't have to be a specific format but i like to say uh because i work at a school with nick just to put it in the context but i like to say uh, popping collars mitten scholars that's kind of <laughs> my little go-to because you know i guess what i'm trying to connect with you is and say that you do a phenomenal job i'm sure of connecting with people and i think I think sometimes as adults we can take ourselves too seriously. I think there's a I think there's a part of humor. I think there's a part of seriousness. I think there's a part of telling them, "Hey, I made these poor choices. You have the ability to do anything you want." Imagine the successful entrepreneur, the business owner. Imagine success being derived from someone that's the first person in their high school to get an advanced degree or finish high school. That to me, man, is just so powerful. That's like that's CEO talk right there. If someone were to ask you, let's say that no one had ever heard of you before, and someone were to ask you, what what is your passion? What were you put here on this earth for? What would your answer to them be? Uh, to share my story. So being born with my disability, I never kind of understood. Why. And the first time I went to go speak in a crowd and people were like, you're inspiring, your story is really dope. That kind of let me know why I was put on earth because... A lot of people couldn't deal with what I've dealt with over 38 years of living and just understanding that uh, I'm an inspiration to people. Didn't really think that because of how the world treats you and what you go through, but just understanding that I'm an inspiration and like to tell my story. The story is actually a helpful story. It's not just a cool underdog story. Like you can really benefit from it. me realizing that and happen and owning that is being able to tell my story every single day or share who I am so it can help somebody, um, you know, have a better day or change, be able to change their perspective. Yeah, that's awesome. So so before uh, before we have you, um, you know, let us know where everybody can find you and all that. Last question. If you uh, if you could give just one. Let's say that, you know, of course, we always hope this is going to happen. Let's, let's say that our podcast is like you know, Joe Rogan part two, right? So like, we're just huge. Okay. And everybody's going to hear your message. Okay. If you could just give one piece of advice that might help somebody out of whatever dark place they're in right now, due to some adversities or whatever it might be, what kind of advice would you give them? If you're just speaking one-on-one -on -one to that one person that happens to be watching out there, I would ask them, who do they want to be? And then I would ask them, how do they expect to get there? And then help them come up with a plan, a plan of okay. having some type of action, something to go along with it. Because if you don't have a plan, if you fail to plan, if you, yeah, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And my mom has always told me to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So just having some, just being able to have a conversation with them and helping them with the plan. Because me being where I'm at today only happened because I came up with a plan because I had, I wrote down my goals. I wrote down the dates. I wrote down the things. I put them in front of my face so I could see them and actually doing things with them. Cause you can say you're a dope person. I could say I got this great story, but if I'm not doing nothing I did to better myself and be able to share it, then I'm just somebody talking and you have to realize you can't just be a talker. You got to actually be a walker. So I, that's what I would, I would give them. Just sit down and have like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. Yeah, that's great advice. Eric, I'm going to leave you with this, man. Uh, it's a weird reference because we didn't get to talk enough hoops, man. But uh, there wasn't a reason to talk hoops, to be honest with you, that you, you bring so much more to the table than just hoops. And I'm yeah. not discrediting hoops. Yeah. But, man, yeah, I, I thought it was more hoop-centered, but it's not, man. It's life-centered. But 
Nolan Nolan Richardson, man, Arkansas Hall of Fame coach, 40 minutes of hell. Nick, you don't know this, but, man, you're talking about full court pressing people, getting up in their chest, stealing the ball, imposing a will on the people. I think the first word out of your mouth, man, it is inspirational. It is powerful. You speak confidently. You have a tone to you. You have an inflection to you. All the stuff that I look for and judge in someone that's done broadcasting, you got it, man. You got it. You command a crowd. You know, I've never listened to you, but I know you command a crowd. And I think you can connect and read the room. You know, I'm judging you a little bit and I'm trying to pay you that compliment, but I know I'm right through listening to you. You're doing a great thing, man. When I came across you, we were, uh, I was just doing some internet research. The same thing that you're doing, you know, a sponsored ad came up. Hey, let's check this guy out. Let's see what he is. You got a lot of substance to your message. You're going to do great things. You're going to be prepared for it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just glad to be part of the journey because we're both in the same spot where we just want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to inspire. We want to encourage. And we're all winners at the end of the day, man. We all cross that tape together and bust that marathon tape. And when it's all said and done, if I've bettered someone's life through this episode, if I've inspired someone, if your answer's can make the crowd feel better than what they came on to it, man, that's a major win for both of us, man. So I can't give you nothing but a, a tap on the back, you know, a, a fist bump, you know, whatever you want to call it to just say, this has been, this has been fun for me, not just a typical podcast. Okay. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Cause when you're a, a host, you yeah. always get to hear that. So I love being on someone else's podcast and being able to share and talk because I love to talk, but sometimes when you're a host, it's not about you, it's about the guest. So, love being able to you know get on someone else's can't wait to have you guys on um mine and appreciate you appreciate you yeah i didn't realize that you were um you were local we would i would have just told you to come out to the house because <laughs> i'm where i'm just i'm on the south side Me, so that, I, and I mean, you're on the west I'm side, on the south right? side too yeah oh are you really see we could have we should have had you out here yeah yeah well i was telling jason i'm like you know you'd make um because you have a podcast as well and you're a speaker you'd make a great you know co-host if you ever want to if you ever want to, you know, like guest host with us, if we have a, a guest on here that, that you're interested in or whatever, and you want to guest host with us, I think it's always fun to, to get a third person. Yeah, definitely. I'm down for that because you guys, you guys are more sports. All right. And I like uh, when you have certain guests and I like to be able to, you know, put people's brain that as a coach of a sport, you always yeah. go and, you know, pick somebody's brain that's successful. Like he was talking about Nolan Richard. You gotta look up the greats and be able to ask those questions. Sometimes the question that a typical person isn't gonna ask. Yeah, let's have a you know act like you've known us for thirty years. Ask us some tactical questions. We'll grow together. Sure. Um, where can I find you on social media if I seek you out? Where can I look to find you? Uh, podcast and just maybe a social media platform or two. Just go on Google and type in Underdog Talk. Underdog is spelled U N D D A W G Talk and put podcast and I'll pop up. Whatever is gonna come up, but that's on my okay. social media. That's the way you can find. Me. You have any uh, any speaking engagements coming up or anything like that that you want anybody to know about? Um, I actually just spoke at a middle school uh, Monday, but no, not not yet. I'm definitely going to have a live podcast that's in the works, and then just be on the lookout on my social media for my book coming out. I got a couple books I'm working on, and then also my son having a, a, a book signing event. Cool, awesome. Okay, you want to do you want to plug your uh, your son's book? Youth Cheat Code. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's about him joining the team and then us winning the state championship within our first second year. So it's just telling this story about how he joined the team and how we ended up winning. Nice, good stuff, hey. man. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for taking the time out for us tonight. Uh, like I said, I, I have a feeling we'll we'll be in touch here uh, quite a bit because I'd love to have you on here as a as a guest host and you know like we're same side of town so there's no reason why we can't we can't hook up sometime yeah that's cool that you know because i'm i'm new to the south side and where i stay yeah it's not too many people i would hang out with so yeah definitely let me know all right man keep winning man i'm proud of you appreciate you you guys keep doing the same thing